Hey guys, this is Beck Draft, and welcome to episode 3 of Create Above and Beyond. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you love to create mod, Minecraft automation, and redstone engineering, then this is the channel for you. So be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. So we're starting this episode standing above the launch pad that we built in the last episode. If you guys missed episode 2, the playlist to this series is linked down in the description. I highly recommend you go watch the previous episodes to get all caught up. But let me show you guys a couple updates that we have, and then we'll talk about the plans for this episode. So the first update is I actually turned off my wood farm because we now have four double chests full of wood. This was completely filled up already, and I emptied it out. So I've got this double chest over here. Actually, it was two double chests full of wood, not four. Uh, we have this completely filled up with wood and our original chest completely filled up with wood. So since I don't really have a way of doing bulk storage right now, I just turned it off. Uh, but we're probably going to be turning it back on in this episode and I'll get back, uh, I'll, I'll show you guys what we're going to be doing with that a little later. So another change that I've made is I've actually redone the iron farm because I had a viewer of episode two, uh, the viewer shout out is, uh, Kai Poo Plays, sorry if I mispronounced that, but thank you for the suggestion. So their suggestion was instead of using the hoppers, we can actually use andesite funnels and feed the, the, um, uh, the items into locked storage drawers. So with these one by two storage drawers, we have flint and iron in each of them. That means the gravel can't actually be sucked in because there's no space for them. They only hold flint and the iron nuggets. So I also made a few storage drawer upgrades, if we can click on this. Oh, empty hand. <laughs> so we made three storage drawer upgrades. These upgrades actually require you to use iron, which is fine because we're now farming it. So we upgraded each of the storage drawers. So I believe we now can have, I think it's roughly a little bit more than a double chest of iron nuggets and a double chest of flint per storage drawer, so that is super, super awesome. Thank you so much, Kaipu Plays, for that suggestion. We're gonna be farming up massive amounts of iron, and we're not gonna have to check up on it as often to clean out the storage. So now on to the plans for this episode. I've actually used this book and quill that we got as a reward for one of the quests, and I've started using it as a checklist for my plans. So the the things we want to start, we want to get done. It does. I guess it doesn't matter in what specific order. I mean, the automatic kinetic mechanisms. We're going to have to build the other farms first. But I want to get the clay farm going. That's going to be similar to the iron farm. Uh, I want to get the andesite farm going. That's going to be interesting. We might have to go into the Nether for that, and I'll explain why a little bit later. Um, we want to get the rubber farm going. I think that's probably the first thing I'm going to do because in this mod pack, I think I explained in the last episode but I can't remember. So in this mod pack, you actually need rubber to make belts. So, and of course we're going to need belts. We also needed to make sealed mechanisms, which I believe are used for copper uh, contraptions. And then we have the belts. So six cured rubber makes three mechanical belts. Now the way that you get rubber, the way we're going to do it is we're going to harvest resin from trees. And I'll show you guys how we're gonna build that farm once we get to it. So we're also, we're gonna do the rubber farm. We gotta do the slabs as well. And then once we have all of that going, especially the clay, the andesite and the slabs, then we're gonna hook up the automatic kinetic mechanism farm. And I'm hoping to have that done by the end of this episode. But I think uh, the first thing we're gonna do is probably the rubber farm. Let me actually check the quest. I don't think, oh, I actually do have a quest that I completed. Uh, oh, the drawers. So. Oh, that gives me upgrade templates actually. So the fact that we built the drawers, we get the upgrade templates. I think that was, it said one to five. I don't know exactly how many we get. Um, and we're also cranking away with this. We will make a mechanical mixer eventually to get those crafting blueprints. But anyway, here is the roadmap. So we have the logs. We need to far start farming uh, um, slabs. Then we also have to farm andesite, which is going to be interesting. And we need to get the clay farm going as well so we can get the andesite alloy. And then we'll be, we will be able to automatically create the kinetic mechanisms and automatically create andesite machines, which is going to be a huge step in this mod pack. But first things first, I think we're going to get the rubber farm going. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so we built yet another platform and we planted five trees on this platform. 
because we're going to use the Arbor Real, I think that's how you say it, <laughs> the Arbor Real Extractors. We're going to put one on each of the trees. So the reason we're doing this for the rubber farm is because we can actually get rubber by compacting down resin. And resin we can get from the Arbor Real Extractors by placing them at the base of a tree. I believe with oak trees, we get it at a rate of 50 resin per tree tree or is it 25 resin hang on here it is 25 resin per tree every 25 seconds or so so this will sl slowly produce rubber for us we're going to pump all of the resin into this basin up here using some create mod pipes and then the mechanical press will press it down into rubber it will drop down here onto this depot and then it will get bulk blasted into cured rubber and collect into this drawer right here so if you're unfamiliar with how create mod pipes work, I can actually show you guys those right now. So just using, we gotta make a couple copper sheets, but uh, just using some copper, we can easily make pipes. And then we also have to make what's called a pump, which is this right here, which is just a pipe with a cog wheel. And that will allow us once it's powered with rotational power we'll have to probably build another couple water wheels. But once we have the pump, we can pump all of the resin into the basin make it into rubber and then bulk blast it into cured rubber and bam we're gonna have mechanical belts so let's get on with this farm and here we have the finished product so let me just explain everything once again we got the water wheel in here it's powering the fan right here the mechanical price up there and of course here is our fluid pump so as you can see, we have the pipes connected up to each of the Arbor Rail extractors. They are extracting the resin from the trees. The resin is collecting in this basin, and then it is getting compacted down into regular rubber, dropped down here, and then bulk blasted into cured rubber, which is collecting in this drawer right here. And we actually have six pieces of cured rubber in the drawer right now, and that is enough to make our first few mechanical belts. So that's one thing off of the list. We have the rubber farm ready to go. So I think the next two things we're going to do, we need to do the clay farm, obviously, and the andesite farm. We definitely need to do both of those before we can get to the automation of kinetic mechanisms. So let's go with the clay. I think we're going to do clay. And essentially the way that you do clay is you need to make sand and there's two ways to do sand early game. You can either do, actually no, sorry, there's only one way to get sand this early in the game and that is through straining. Straining is something I've personally never done before but it doesn't seem that difficult. You need a sediment strainer and then there's like a strainer base. Yeah, so we need to get an andesite machine for that and then I think we just put it in water and then it slowly gets sand over time. And I think we'll do something similar to this because then you have to wash the sand and you have a chance to get clay after washing the sand. So we'll have a setup similar to this to get the clay and then once we get some mechanical belts going, then we will uh, look into feeding it all into a centralized place to do the automated andesite machines. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with straining. So we have our strainer base, which was just an andesite machine and some iron bars, but now we're trying to get, uh, what are they called? Straw. So we actually need straw to make this canvas that we need to make the strainer. So we're going to need 12, I think it is. Yeah, 12 pieces of straw. And the way that you get straw is you craft a knife, which I just crafted with some iron and a stick and you just basically cut ferns and grass and you have a chance to get the straw from it so we're just kind of running around trying to get the 12 pieces we need for our first strainer so hopefully this doesn't take too long there's another thing off the list we now have clay going so we have the strainer base up top you can see that it actually just produced a piece of sand the sand is now getting washed by this fan and if it produces clay it's getting sucked into this drawer right here so let me show you uh, what's going on up here so you have to put water on top of the strainer base and then you have to put the strainer actually into the base and each strainer only has 300 uses unfortunately we're going to have to replace it periodically but that's okay they're relatively cheap um, so they have a chance to produce a piece of clay uh, let's see what the actual rates are so with each one, you have a chance to produce a clay, an orange sand, a white sand, or a regular sand. So if it does produce a clay ball, it'll just get immediately sucked into the drawer. And when it produces sand, which once this meter fills up, it'll produce one of those pieces of sand or clay, that will get washed by the fan once again and pulled into the drawer. Now the cool thing about these drawers is 
you're kind of creating a really awesome early game filter because you can pull only certain items into them if they're locked with just that item. And then if you actually put an andesite funnel underneath them, which I kind of can't show right now, it will pull those items out. So it's a really, really awesome way to make an early game item filter. So we can actually go over to our quests now and we can check off clay because we're all done with that. And I think the next thing I want to do, we either need to get the algal blender going to create the algal bricks or we need to get the andesite going. So like I said, the way that we produce andesite, uh, we have to go down to bedrock. And I did mention that I think we'd have to go to the nether for that. And the reason being is because, let's go back to the quest log, it says the andesite lift. All your andesite is likely not being generated near your factory because we have to generate it down at bedrock. Figure out a way to bring it to the surface. Now we could use a create mod, um, I think, what is it called? Like a pulley or a lift? Yeah, here it is. Uh, rope pulley. We could use that, or, I mean, I don't see why we couldn't just use a bubble vader, honestly. Um, so, to, to, uh, to get that, we'll need to get some soul sand, so we'll have to go to the nether. I don't think there's anything stopping us from going to the nether in this mod pack, honestly. Oh, I didn't know. You could, you could actually bulk wash mad blocks into obsidian. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, there is a deposit of obsidian not far from me if I pull up the map. Right over here, there's a ruined portal, so... We could go over there and collect up that obsidian and go to the nether. All we really need is just one soul sand so we can make the bubble vader. Um, I think let's actually go ahead and do that. I am a little afraid of going into the nether, but we'll just have to be careful. Hopefully, we can find soul sand quickly. Alrighty, here's the portal. And let's hope we don't have a horrible spawn. Okay. Um, at least we're not in a basalt delta. Um, and it looks like we got some warp forests around us. I'm not seeing, there's a, wow, there's Enderman all over the place. <laughs> I'm not seeing any soul sand just yet, but if we look around, what is that? Make sure I don't fall and die. Uh, I think if, when we look around for a little bit, we'll probably find some, another cobalt ore. Oh, 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 we can actually make pickaxes and stuff out of this. That's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I think we'll look around for a little bit. Hopefully it won't take us very long to find some soul sand. Okay, we got down here, and of course there's piglins. Uh, I think we're gonna have to fight our way down towards the soul sand, hopefully. Maybe they won't see me, hang on. Or maybe they'll punch me into the lava. <laughs> Why? Yep, here he comes, here he comes. Okay, 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 I'm scared. Oh, no, this ain't so bad. Never mind, we're okay. Soul sand has been obtained, now let's go back home. All right, so now that we got the soul sand, it's time to set up a bedrock generator. So the bedrock generator, like we said before, this has a chance to produce all kinds of different stones. So if I go to andesite and go to the custom generating, essentially we combine the water and lava on top of a piece of bedrock like you would to create cobblestone, and it has a chance to create andesite, granite, uh, that other create mod gabbaro, I think is what it is. Um, and I think cobblestone, so essentially we'll just have to collect all that, shoot it up into a bubble elevator, and then make sure that we collect it and probably sort it out up here. But I think we're gonna do it right here because this is where we're going to combine the kelp and the clay to create the algal blend, to create the algal bricks. And then once we have the andesite and the algal bricks, then we can automatically do the andesite alloy. And once we have that going, then all we gotta do is create our slab farm. I, I don't know if we're gonna, I think we're gonna manually feed the logs in. No, 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 we're probably not gonna feed them, manually feed them in. We'll probably have some belts leading that over here as well. And then we can set up our automated kinetic mechanisms. So let's get going with the generator. We gotta dig all the way down to bedrock and create a giant bubble vader. This is gonna be fun. The bubble elevator is in place and the farm is currently running. So everything is collecting into this chest right here. We already have a bunch of stone collecting up. So if I just drop down this drop chute right here, fall all the way down to bedrock, I can show you guys what we got going on. So we got a water wheel back there and a mechanical drill. So the lava is up here and the water is back here. So what's going on is when the water meets the lava and it's on top of bedrock, it's creating one of those pieces of stone that in that case we got Gabbro. And once it creates it, the water actually flows out a little bit more underneath the lava and pushes it into the bubble elevator. It's kind of innovative if you ask me. Thank you very much. <laughs> pretty cool, pretty cool. And then it shoots it all the way back up and into that funnel and then into the chest for now. And we can actually ride the bubble vader back up as well. We do have to break a couple blocks to get out, but it's a pretty convenient way to get back up and down. I just gotta break these two blocks and then we can grab our way out of here. 
and then open up the quest log because we actually completed a couple more of our quests. So we have the automated clay, we have the automated andesite going, and we have a way of getting it back to the surface. So we have all of the farms that we need to automate kinetic mechanisms. Now it's just a matter of bringing them all together. So it's time for some belt spaghetti. So I've made the mechanical saws and the deployers that we're going to need to automate our kinetic mechanisms. I'm super excited to finally get to this point. Uh, but I'm actually pretty much out of andesite alloy, um, and we don't have too much andesite coming through the farm right now. So I think we're just going to start setting up the automated andesite alloy. But for this whole thing, let me explain to you guys exactly what we're going to have to do. So we're going to have to take a kelp from the kelp farm and the clay from the clay farm, feed both of those into a mixer to create the algal blend then feed the algal blend into a bulk blaster to create the algal brick, then feed the algal brick along with the andesite into a second mixer to create the andesite alloy. So as you can see here for the andesite alloy, if you combine that in a mix, algal brick and andesite cobblestone in a mixer, you get to andesite alloy. Then we feed the andesite alloy into the deployers to create the kinetic mechanisms. And then secondly, we have to take wood from the wood farm and bring it over here. And then we feed it through three saws. So this is the idea. I'll put these down right here and kind of explain it to you guys here. So with this quest line right here, the first saw is going to turn the logs into stripped wood. The second one will turn it into planks and the third one will turn it into slabs. So slabs are actually what we need in the assembly line to create the kinetic mechanisms. So if I go, where is it right here? So if, if you see the base recipe, you actually need a whole log to create one me kinetic mechanism. But if you do the sequence assembly with the deployers, you only need a slab. So we're going to be feeding those along the belt underneath the deployers. So the first deployer is going to put the andesite alloy, then the second andesite alloy, and then we're going to need to make a, make a bunch of stone saws, which aren't a problem at all. And we will be automating the kinetic mechanisms. So that's a lot to throw together. I should have all of the materials to do it once we get our hands on a bit more andesite alloy. So we're just going to go ahead and grind this out and get it done. Ladies and gentlemen, do not be fooled by the super fast transition. This is about three, four hours later. I have no idea. I lost track of time. But this was quite a ridiculous project. When the guide said enjoy the belt spaghetti, they were not lying. This was quite ridiculous. So I'm going to try to explain what's going on here. It's it's incredibly, incredibly gross, but <laughs> I, I don't know. We got through it. Whatever. Um, so we have the andesite being fed through over here. We're filtering out the granite, the gabbro, and the diorite. So then the andesite will end up in this basin down here. So we still have to feed in the algal bricks, which we'll be doing next. Uh, but then what we'll be doing is what, what this, these belts will be doing is we'll be taking the andesite alloy. It'll be fed down here through this tunnel. We're creating two andesite alloy uh, per batch. So one of them will go that way. The other will go that way. So we'll be evenly distributing between these two deployers right here. This deployer right here obviously holds the saw and then the wood is going to get dropped down over here. If you're confused, it's okay because I still am a little bit too. <laughs> I don't know. So we might end up moving the clay farm actually we might move it over here uh, Because then we could probably feed the kelp in a lot easier combine the kelp and the clay into the algal brick and then smelt it down into The well the algal blend and then into the algal brick and then feed that brick over here into this basin And then that should pretty much be it then we just got to figure out how to power that belt those deployers and we're uh, we're good to go <laughs> so hopefully this doesn't take me too much longer okay quick progress update we ended up moving the clay farm over here to this other platform and we've hooked it all up together with a feed from the kelp farm as well into a mixer right here and we are finally automating the algal brick so right here is where the blend is getting smelted it's getting fed into this drawer and then dropped below onto this belt down here which actually you can see uh, the algal brick is now feeding into our mixer down here. So that's actually, we can start checking that off of the list. So if we come back over here, we now have the blend. Oh, oh whoops. <laughs> we now have the blend automated. We have the brick automated. And then the final step, um, this is actually all done too. We just got to turn that on. 
Uh, why isn't it letting me? Uh, click the view. Oh, do I have to actually give it? Oh, sorry. I have to actually give it a plank to do that? Um, I guess I might have to surrender a plank to actually complete that one. I think I might have to surrender 50% done. Oh, I also have to give it a brick. Okay. Okay, well, we'll get all that checked off, and then we will have our automated kinetic mechanisms. I just got to figure out a couple more things. We have to power this mixer over here, power all of the deployers and that final belt down there, and then that's going to be it. So we're going to go ahead and turn this thing on, and I'll check back with you guys in just a sec. Everything is now in place to automatically create our kinetic mechanisms. I just have to place in one more cog. Hopefully, this doesn't overstress the system. Otherwise, I'm going to look really silly, but all I have to do is place in this cog right here and there we go So now we should see the deployers placing the andesite first andesite second andesite alloy and finally the finishing touch with the saw and that should be kinetic mechanisms Automatically generated. I can't believe we finally did it. Oh, that took way longer than I would have liked but anyway ladies and gents we finally have it, so we can go into the quest book. I already completed everything else, and there we go. Hit the andesite machine, and we complete the task. So we get 16 kinetic mechanisms, 1 to 5 redstone dust, and 1 to 5 iron ingots. Pretty cool. Let's collect up all of that. That is super awesome. And I think with that done, we can go back to the overview, and we have the andesite machinery all finished. So I think we actually get this as well. It says, while copper machines will definitely be required going forward, full automation of their ingredients is completely optional. After hitting the check mark above, additional quests located in the first chapter will be revealed. Okay, I think we technically... Okay, liquid resin. Yeah, we actually already did all this. Um, so we got rubber going already. We got the resin going. So I guess we can complete that separately. But anyway, let's actually activate chapter two. So this is the next thing we're going to have to do. Um, this is pretty much all the time I have for this episode, but let's just read this. The chicken and egg problem remains. In order to automate precision mechanisms for brass equipment more conveniently, uh, having more brass equipment will be really helpful. After hitting the check mark above the second chapter of the factory guide, uh, will become accessible from the quest sidebar. So there we go. We are fully on our way to getting into space. So alluring expedience, and this is crazy looking. So chapter two starts. The automation target this time is the electron tube. Placing them onto the kinetic mechanism will send you to the next tier. Happy inventing. And we get some builder's tea. Um, okay, so got the builder's tea. Okay, so there's tons of stuff we have to do here. I'm actually not even sure. So the, the ending here is we're automating the, the brass machines, which are the next thing on the menu. We already have 25 kinetic mechanisms. That's super awesome. So anyway, um, sorry if your brains are fried with all of the belt spaghetti going on here, um, but it is super, super awesome that we finally have chapter one complete. I have noticed that the bottleneck right now is actually clay, so I might have to make a few more strainer bases um, and get clay producing faster so that we can keep this going um, smoothly. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, ladies and gents, thank you so much for joining me for yet another episode. Um, that was a lot of effort that went into this episode. So if you guys have been enjoying this series thus far, please, please, please hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button with the bell for notifications. Leave a comment down below and share this with your friends. Any help you guys can give to help me grow the channel is much appreciated. We just hit one thousand subscribers which is an awesome milestone i can't thank you guys enough for helping me get to this point in my youtube career but anyway keep an eye out for future episodes tutorials and other videos like this i will see you guys again take care bye bye